Let's talk about the baits at Bung Samaran. So I want to just go over the baits that are available at Bung Samaran when you come here. You can buy bread. It's already slightly sort of ground up, a big bucket of it. And you can buy ram. Ram is basically a Thai ground bait. It's the husk of the rice uh, grain. Those little husks that, that, that come off the rice grain when they process the rice, they grind them up and they create this super dry powder. It looks kind of like a talcum powder. And those are the two baits that you can buy and use when you come to Bung Sam Ran. When it comes to using the bread bait, you can just moisten that down and use it straight onto the feeder. Um, or you can get yourself a plastic tray like this. It's got these holes, they're about um, a centimeter by a centimeter. Pour your bread in. And then rough the bread backwards and forwards, kind of like a cheese grater, but you're grating the bread up. And then the bread that falls through, I don't know if you can see this, the bread that falls through is gonna be much finer, more even. And hopefully when it gets into the water, it breaks up a lot better. Keep going like that until you've got all your bread through. The thing about the ram bait is you want it dry enough so that when it hits the water, it breaks up quite quickly and brings the fish in. You don't want to bring your uh, feeder in after 15, 20 minutes and find that you've still got a ball of ram on it because you, it's, it's too wet. But you also want to make it wet enough so that it can stand up to the forces involved with the cast. When it comes out of the bag, it's really dry and powdery like this. A few things that can help you is to get yourself a water bottle filled with the lake water, punch a row of holes in the top of it, so it gives you a bit more of a spray pattern. And then you've really got to work it. Getting one of these uh, wide, shallow bowls so you can really mix all the ram together and stir it around is going to make life a lot easier for you. And you got to keep going, keep going, stirring, breaking it up with your hands, stirring, flatten it down. Any balls that you find, squash them out. Okay, before the sun goes down, I've been adding water to this now, mixing it around, stirring it around. I've still got it in a powder form. There's a few little balls. If it's still in a powder form, if I grab a handful of it and squeeze it, I can form a ball, and that ball still breaks up relatively easy. I think I'm somewhere close now. I might need a little bit more water, but before you go and, and get it any wetter, when you get it to this sort of consistency, just, just wait, just give it five minutes, get yourself a drink, uh, set your rod up, whatever. Don't just keep adding water to it and adding, wa adding water to it. It's very easy to go too far. When you get it close, stop. Wait for the powder to absorb the water and then reassess it. Okay, it's been a, it's been a few minutes. I've I have added a little bit more water. It seemed to dry out a bit. I've still got it light and fluffy. Get a big handful of the ground bait. Drop the cage feeder right into the middle of it. Middle of it. Another handful on the top. Really sort of light to start with. Just keep getting the material up. Once you've got a big handful of it, you can work it around. Squeezing it in, squeezing it in, squeezing it in. Keep going. Your bait, you're, you're making a ball about as big as a tennis ball. Yeah, some people are better at doing this than others. I've got better, but I'm still not good. Make sure your line's free, both ends. You've got it into a nice powdery ball. Take the hook. Now, you don't actually need anything on the hook. The fish will just take it as they swim past. Or you can put a little bit of uh, bread, um, or some people will just put a chunk of uh, float on it to make the, the hook a little bit negatively buoyant. You'll see some people put in um, like a white polystyrene balls on it. 
that you'd find in sort of uh, pillows and things or just chop up an old float give yourself a little chunk make sure the, the hook still sinks something I should have mentioned in the video is the hook placement uh, if your leader length for your hook is two to three inches long, you can leave it hanging below the feeder and it won't get tangled up when you cast out. But if your hook length is any longer than three inches, you may want to consider just putting the hook back, bending the line back and, and sticking the hook into the side of the ball. This way, when you cast it out, the hook length isn't flying around in the wind and it won't get tangled up. When the ball hits the water and it starts to dissolve, the hook will just fall off the side of the ball and should hopefully end up nicely positioned below the, the feeder. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe.